This is one of the 21 different models you can get a 2021 Porsche Panamera in. It is the Panamera 4S E-Hybrid Sport Turismo, and it's probably the smartest pick from them all. Actually, I would pick it without the Sport Turismo part because the wagon shape might add practicality, but I really like how the regular one looks. It looks like a four-door 911. You know, that concept car from the 90s that they never made? So it doesn't look obviously the same as the old 911. It looks the same as the current 911, but who doesn't want something that looks like a 911? Just look at this car. Look at the width. It's the girth every man dreams of having. And don't get me wrong, that means that the track is also very wide, which in turn means lots of grip. Who doesn't like grip? From the side, it looks very long, because it is. It is five meters and five centimeters. So take that tape measure and make sure it will fit in your garage before you buy one. It is a gorgeous car, especially in colors like this gentian blue metallic. It makes mouth salivate more than Gordon Ramsay can. The wheels are absolutely massive. They're 20 inch and the front are wrapped with 295 rubber and the rear with 315. That's a lot of tire. Best of all, the calipers are acid green, just like the outer shadow of the emblems on the car. The front calipers are six piston with 410 millimeter rotors, while the rears are four piston with 365 rotors. There is tons of stopping power. This is a pretty heavy car. It weighs in at 2.2 tons. With me in, it's probably 2.3 tons. And from 100 kilometers an hour, it came to a complete stop in just 38 meters. That is sports car territory. Under the hood, this e-hybrid has two power units. One turns gas into ear orgies as the exhaust note leaves from the back and comes and has sex with your ears. It really sounds that good. The other engine is absolutely silent and just looks after your wallet or some trees maybe. It makes 443 horsepower and 405 pound-feet of torque from that beautiful 2.9 liter twin turbo V6. Add another 134 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque from the EV motor and the combined total, the way those charts meet, is 552 horsepower and 553 pound-feet of torque. Hello! Unlike the previous generation hybrid Panameras, this time around for the Panamera hybrids, they gave it the PDK transmission. So they gave it the good stuff. And it's not only the transmission that has multiple clutches, the all wheel drive system also has multiple clutch plates and it heavily, and when I say heavily, I mean heavily favors their rear wheels. The rear wheels can also steer as it has four wheel steering. And that really makes the car so amazing. At low speeds, the rear wheels turn the opposite direction of the front and that results in really tight turning circles. Like this thing can just like pivot almost on top of itself, right? Uh, at higher speeds, probably over 60 kilometers an hour, the rear wheels turn slightly with the front wheels and that results in incredible highway stability. Like you can be going 200 kilometers on the Autobahn or 293, which is the top speed of this car. and I kid you not, the stability you feel in this car is a train. That's what you, it feels like. Like it's the next best thing is a train. It's that good. The battery pack is about 17 kilowatt hours. We don't have exact specs, but based on my flow charger, which can measure how much energy is being sent to the car, it should be about that much. It should take about three hours for a full charge, but only if you upgrade the onboard charger to a 7.2 kilowatt charger, because this one, has the basic one, which is 3.6. So it takes about six hours to fully charge the car. I mean, that upgrade of the onboard charger is only it's under a thousand bucks, so you better do it. Once all charged up, you get about 55 to 60 kilometers of EV only range, and the car is very drivable without resorting to the turbos to move it. It's absolutely perfect for your morning commute when you're, you know, holding your coffee in your hand and you have eye boogers all over and you're half asleep. You don't need more power. The EV, honestly, has enough power to get you going. It doesn't have a lot of horsepower. I mean, 134 is not that not little, but it has a lot of torque, so it can really move this thing. With everything fired up, zero to 100 kilometers an hour comes in only 3.7 seconds with the help of launch control, and 100 to zero comes in 38 meters with the help of Brembo. Performance is really good, especially off the line. It pulls really well from like zero reps, because that's what you're doing when it's on the hybrid, 
uh, to the red line, which is like at 7,000. The best thing is the engine sound, like as it builds up the revs, oh my God, does it sound good. Let me just shortly demonstrate, okay? Manual mode on the PDK and listen to this. As the revs climb, so good. And it crackles and it pops. so satisfying to have the exhaust valves open and let it scream. You can get quicker cars for the money, but nothing that can also be green. That's a major advantage. Fuel economy can be as little as five or six liters per hundred kilometers if you plug it in a lot. If you don't, it will double, but again, that is great for the size and performance. According to my trip computer, I have driven now 377 kilometers and my average fuel economy is just six liters per 100 kilometers an hour. Beat that with a performance car. I love this drivetrain, especially now that the range is very usable and you get a proper PDK box. Handling is awesome. Grip levels are super high and with a four wheel steering, sport diff, Porsche stability management and rear biased all wheel drive system, you have everything you need to even hit the track. The car weighs 2.2 tons, but with this perfect air suspension, managing the weight, honestly, like it doesn't feel like an outright sports car, but holy sh can it turn. It just feels so good. So freaking good. How can you beat that in a car this big? Even if you push really hard, it's very neutral and progressive. It almost never understeers. And if you really try, you can kick the tail out a bit, but you gotta try. Even with all systems turned off, it doesn't feel as competent as let's say an M5 competition or even an AMG GT63 four door. That's a heavy car too, but on a track, it's killer. It's really quick. This one is there, it just feels like it tries a little bit harder to be there because of the extra weight and the batteries and all that stuff. I mean, obviously, but it does a great, great job. Like I can't complain one bit and it's really fun. And can I tell you the soundtrack, it just, it's perfect. I mean, it might not be as quick as the other cars, but with the soundtrack, it's equally as exciting. And that's all that matters. This thing is so much fun, like honestly. And as I said, if you really try hard, you can kick the tail out a little bit, but my God, mind blowing. The exhaust, the exhaust, I love the exhaust. On a hybrid, I love the exhaust. That makes no sense. Thank you, Porsche. On a scale of 100, it might score only 98 compared to its really sporty rivals. However, once you experience the right comfort in this thing, you won't even care. The four corner air suspension is magical. I absolutely love how good it is. It is so much better than what Mercedes has to offer, for example. The ride is exceptional and the way it feels at high speeds, planted is an understatement. And when you want, it's super quiet too. And it's not only because it's a hybrid, but it's so well insulated, so it's so quiet. Such a comfortable car. We went on a little excursion with my family. My kids fell asleep in the back seat. They haven't slept in a car for over two years. And they were like knocked out cold. That's how comfortable this car is. The interior is very well made. The materials are ultra high grade. Fit and finish is as good as you would expect it to be. The only thing I don't like is this beige. I would like the chalk or red instead, but that's just personal taste. The driving position is perfect. Visibility is really good for a car with such a slopey roof. And oh my God, the seat, pff, I have no words. The seats are exceptional. They're perfect. They're magnificent. They're, I want to take it home. It's that good. Roominess is also really good. They're just a few places for your stuff, but you do get two cup holders and a wireless charger in the armrest. You have two USB-C ports in the back where the two individual seats offer tons of headroom, lots of legroom. Now a third passenger wouldn't really fit there. He would have to spread them quite badly, but for two, it's perfect. 
The front seats are also heated, but they're also ventilated, and I'm happy to report that the beautiful steering wheel is heated as well. The trunk is only 418 liters, mainly due to the hybrid system taking up some space, but it's still very usable and has a very wide opening. You can also fold the seats down and create a perfectly flat loading bay. In terms of tech, you get a fantastic instrument cluster with lots of info and some customization. The heads-up display, especially in sport chrono mode, is an aphrodisiac for me. The infotainment is robust and offers a very responsive and high-def screen, which is also home to wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. The rear camera is a bit worse than expected, but you also get a 360 view, which is really nice, and the sound system in here is loud enough to shatter teeth. I also really like the driving assistance. I mean, it has the Porsche InnoDrive, which adapts to everything and sets up the car in a more exciting way than just pure safe way that other companies do. I'll put a link underneath the video for, from a video from Porsche explaining how InnoDrive works. I mean, if you're interested, watch it. It's, it's really cool. Prices in Canada start at $135,000 and our test vehicle was $157,000 before taxes. You can get a real beast for that money, like a BMW M5 competition or maybe even CS, a Mercedes AMG GT four-door, an Audi RS7, even the Porsche Taycan could be considered a threat, but none of them can offer what this one can offer, being a plug-in hybrid with a very exciting voice. Overall score for this magnificent machine is 8.8 .8 out of 10. It would have been a nine for the sports sedan just because it looks so much better. So that's pretty much it for today in the Porsche Panamera 4S e-hybrid Sport Turismo. If you like this video, please remember to subscribe, share this video with your friends, and most importantly, till next time, be well. Bye-bye.